You know I love a good kitchen store, especially unique kitchen gadgets and items. I'm looking for all things microwave. Whenever I'm buying a kitchen item, we'll see what it's made out of and see if it's like microwave safe, dishwasher safe. One of the first problem solved videos was never cook an egg in the microwave. We're going back on that now. You can cook eggs in the microwave. How do you like your eggs? Scrambled over easy? maybe even poached. This is hands down the easiest shortcut for poached eggs. Traditional poached eggs take some culinary technique, but with the microwave, anybody can do it. You can use a mug or a glass microwave safe container. I'm just gonna do about a half a cup of water. Let's get things cracking. Gently add to the water and just a little bit of salt. Find a cover, you can even use a small plate or saucer. And in for one minute. That yolk looks set, but we're gonna give it another 15 seconds. That looks about perfect. A minute and 15 will give you a soft, runny yolk. If you like a firmer yolk, go closer to two minutes. And when you think poached egg, you think Benedict. All right, here's the moment of truth. Perfect. All microwaves vary, so adjust your time accordingly. Now you can do poached eggs on a weekday. I was in the mood for poached eggs and I was like, let me go to breakfast. And they have a huge selection of Benedicts here. This actually looks amazing. This is like 10 times more amazing than I thought it would be. That is perfect. What's great is if you don't like runny yolks, just get poached hard, just like a hard boiled egg. I wonder how they do it back there. <laughs> Usually I go like an over easy egg, but I think poached is the way to go. That reminds me, mix up your Eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict doesn't have to just always be the Canadian bacon. Corned beef hash Benedict, total winner. So I've been doing a little bit of experimentation with poached eggs. And there's this device from Prep Solutions. And it's just a poached egg cooker for your microwave. Poached eggs usually takes a long time. It's like a pot with water and vinegar and stirring and making a vortex so that the white sets correctly. But if you're just making a weekday breakfast, go ahead and microwave your egg. It's the quickest, easiest, and it's like super easy cleanup too. Fill it with water first. I like to crack my eggs into a bowl separately. That way if any shell gets in there, I can pick it out. This, so egg number one, slot number one. Get the co-pilot ready. Huevos dos. And I like a soft yolk. The instructions say a minute 15 for a runny yolk. And there we go, all done. And the poached eggs flip into the lid. Moment of truth, ready? Ooh, so it didn't quite work. I think it needs to go a little longer. I feel like anything in the kitchen, if you get a new pot, you get a new pan, you get a new anything, you should experiment with it and test it out because not everything works the right way the first time. <laughs> what I love about the microwave too is it's so funny that like five, 10 seconds can make all the difference. Okay, so these look great now. So the, yeah, the yolks are just a little firm for me, but still great, kind of like a hard boiled egg. <laughs> Something like this is great if you're gonna be microwaving a couple eggs every day. Maybe I'll skip it just because this suits me much easier, but it works. Growing up, this is how we made bacon straight up in the microwave on one of these things. Maybe it's changed, I haven't done it in a while. It's so messy, but it does make crispy bacon. It just would always take forever and be so messy. This you can make a whole meal. Just make your whole fish and veggies all in one tray. We'll save that for another time though, making fish in the microwave. We'll just stick to the basics today. I have way too much stuff. I hit the jackpot here. There's something for everything I'm doing, like this popcorn bucket. I wasn't sure what I'd be able to find in stores, but this store has everything I needed. Clearly I'm really enjoying this store and I'd rather carry everything like this than get a basket. Are you only using your microwave to reheat leftovers? Let this be inspiration to use your microwave to actually cook meals. The microwave can be the perfect way to meal prep and take some heat off that stove. You can find specialty cookware just for preparing meals in the microwave. This Joseph Joseph set I got on Amazon covers a lot of bases. You've got a lid slash plate, a griddle rack, a steamer basket, and a microwavable pot. The grill plate's gonna be great for vegetables and even bacon. Steam those frozen or fresh vegetables and boil your potatoes. Instead of a hot pot on the stove, prep that pasta in the microwave. The pasta pasta is made just for that. Wait a minute. I think it's fasta pasta. It's like a play on words. Pasta rice, veggies, casserole. I love a device that's multiple uses. I also found this super affordable rice cooker that you can use right in the microwave. You've got the paddle. Oh, and a steamer basket in there. I think it's time to use that microwave for way more than just reheating. 
What are you cooking in your microwave? I was shopping for kitchen gadgets and all of a sudden I realized it was late in the afternoon and it was time for lunch. I was thinking of all the things I'm making in the microwave and I like, I needed a tie-in. We're making rice, so why not stop for some sushi? I love bento boxes though. Like bento boxes are honestly one of my favorite lunch staples. It's just a happy rice day. So I used to make sushi because I just love the art and technique and learning about it. I had this, you know, sushi 101 book. I think I need to re-bring back my sushi phase, my sushi artistry. <laughs> this is cookware that you can do everything right in the microwave. I'm just gonna add some water to the bowl of this. The steamer basket, just some frozen broccoli. This works great on fresh vegetables too. I'm gonna try this out, three to five minutes. And prep for your side dishes is perfect. For the microwave, save the stove, use a microwave. And there, perfectly steamed broccoli, just like that. I mean, not that I'm rating this, but I would say 10 out of 10. This was in five minutes and you've got a whole side dish just ready to go. So this is the Joseph Joseph microwave rice cooker. Let's do a cup of long grain rice. We need 400 milliliters of water and it takes 10 minutes in the microwave. A rice cooker takes like 20 minutes. Straight to the top. Has this perforated basket so you can wash your rice right in the device. Please don't show the dishes and the sink piling up. That's embarrassing. No, no! <laughs> you know, we filmed a lot of recipes and a lot of stuff today. Rice in, lid on, and I love the design of this. After a lot of trial and error with this microwave, I figured out it cooks like really fast. So I try to go in the low end of times. This just finished and it needs to sit for about five minutes. So I'm just gonna leave it in the microwave. We got some of that starchy flaking on the top. I was not expecting that. Oh, get out of town. That actually looks like great rice. That is great, perfect rice. Took about 15 minutes total time, and this rice looks perfect in here. Is this a real person? Is this somebody I can meet, Joseph? Is it two Josephs? You're making good stuff. Problem Solved has a long-standing history with microwaves. Our first series I ever did was about things to not put in the microwave. Since then, I've done a ton of microwave-related videos, so I'm gonna go through them, see if we can find any comments to react to. Yeah, that microwave was clean to begin with, but it, but this really does work. I generally like to keep my microwave clean. I don't think you should let it get really gross and then clean it. I just tend to wipe it out every few days, once a week, get it cleaned out. So many lemons. Once you use your lemons, juice them, do whatever with them, instead of throwing that away, use those lemons. There's still some essential oils in there. There's still some lemon juice in there. You don't need whole fresh lemons. He really does use lemons for everything. Yes, there's a problem solved hierarchy of cleaning. Vinegar? baking soda, lemons. These are the three pillars of problem solved cleaning. Microfiber cloth is probably number four. <laughs> How often are you cleaning your microwave? This is a fun way to get that job done. Angry Mama's a device that takes all the frustration out of cleaning that microwave. While I try to avoid single use kitchen items, I love something that inspires people to clean and have fun doing it. It's so easy to use. Simply add vinegar to the line, fill with water, and then you're good to go. Now let mama blow off some steam for seven minutes in the microwave. So it's all done. Just let that sit for about two minutes before we get inside and clean up the rest. It's been a couple minutes. She still looks mad, but at least the microwave's clean. This deodorizes and loosens up any stuck on gunk. So you can go ahead and wipe it away. Super easy with a damp rag. You can do the same thing in a microwave safe container with some vinegar and some water. But a device like this makes the process fun and foolproof. No matter which method you use, do a clean like this once a month. Just good routine maintenance to keep everything clean and odor free. Problem solved. I was trying to figure out a place I could get really good popcorn from, and the first place I thought of was, of course, the theater. So I was like, who goes to the movie theater just to get popcorn? I'm gonna check out another place real quick. Actually, are they playing Renaissance? I'm on my own schedule. We can take a little break. Let's just see if it's playing. No Renaissance, a film by Beyonce, so I guess we're going somewhere else for popcorn. Throughout our history together, we've had several misadventures where I'm out looking for something in particular, and it just doesn't seem to exist. I got here. Shut down. I was very intrigued. I was like, ooh, Chicago style popcorn. What does that mean? Not available, does not exist. It's about the journey, it's about searching, and sometimes things don't work out. It's their loss. Well, it's actually my loss that I didn't get any popcorn. Do you like microwave popcorn or popcorn on the stove? This is how to get the freshest popcorn straight from your microwave. Yep. 
right in the microwave. That bagged popcorn can have preservatives and chemicals. That's why I prefer to pop my own. But popping on the stove takes some technique and time. That's why I like to pop those fresh kernels right in the microwave. I'm taking a brown paper lunch bag, toss in my kernels. You can toss those kernels in about a teaspoon of oil. Believe it or not, you don't even need the oil if you're trying to be a little healthier. Once that bag's in there, I set the microwave to about three minutes. Once that popping gets to a two second interval, that's when you know it's about ready. It took about three minutes in total to put this together, healthy snack, and this is the one without oil, it tastes great. You can find premium quality kernels at a fraction of the price of the bag stuff. If those kernels are a little older, you'll notice they're not popping that well, try this soaking method. Just cover them with water and let them soak for 10 minutes. This method can help them cook more evenly and be fluffier. You can ditch that paper lunch sack and use a large bowl with a plate as a lid instead. Or specialty devices designed just for microwave popping. Micropop is one of the more popular brands you can find on Amazon. Then add salt, butter, and flavoring till your heart's content. And I like to use a fine salt. It helps stick to those kernels better. What are your favorite popcorn flavors? I got lucky. I parked right here and the honey booth was right here. I, all I needed was honey. They have everything. This is great. So this is the cat's claw. Thank you. Mm. So it's just straight from the honeycomb. Correct. Wow, I love that. So the mesquite obviously is the opposite end of the cat's claw. That's so good. I love honey. Ooh, I think I might go with the cat's claw just because I've never had it before. Yeah, good choice. But that mesquite is so good. The market was actually a last minute decision, but it worked out so great. There were actually three different honey booths. <laughs> I just went to the first one I saw. Good haul today. If you ever reach for your honey and it looks like this, this is the quickest way to decrystallize your honey. While honey is one of those foods that may not go bad, it's hard to use when it's crystallized. If the honey's in a plastic container, I like to just transfer it to a heat safe bowl. Usually it's that last little bit you wanna use up but not go to waste. Microwaving the plastic can lead to warping or even burning the plastic. I'm using this butter knife because it's a little easier to scrape it out of there than a spoon. Honey can be expensive, so don't waste any. First thing, you'll wanna find the power settings on your microwave and lower those a bit. And then it only needs about 30 seconds that quick. Give it a stir, break up any remaining large crystals, and you can even put it back in for another 10, maybe 15 seconds. Back in business, ready for tea time. If your honey's in a glass jar, you can go ahead and microwave it in that. Just be sure to remove those metal lids. What are you putting your honey in? I think there's some misconceptions out there about the microwave. Oh, don't stand close to the microwave. The microwave's putting radiation in your food. Well, technically, Yes, it is using radiation, but this is microwaves. It's different. It's not like, you know, the Simpsons power plant radiation, glowing green, you know, plutonium. If you embrace it and you learn how to use it, it can be a powerful cooking tool, just like your Instant Pot, just like your oven, just like your pressure cooker, your slow cooker. <laughs> so po wax on poetic about all the ways I love the microwave. We've tried a ton of methods to prevent tears with onions. There is one in the microwave I wanted to try. So you microwave it for 30 to 45 seconds and this is supposed to kill the compounds in there that make you cry. Onion's a little toasty. Slice it in half. So unscientific, but let's see. I mean, I smell onion. Okay, it's giving me a little tears, but it didn't do it instantly. Kind of took a while. Have you ever had those onions where you're like, the second you cut into it, you're like, can't even see? I have a little bit of tears, but it's actually not that bad. You know, for a quick experiment, never tried this before, the microwaving the onion. Okay, well, there it is. So maybe this is a fail, because right when I spread the onions out, instant tears. See, this is why we test some things first. <laughs> Don't microwave the onion, it really is not doing much. It's like I just watched Marley and me. You know, you win some, you lose some, and uh, trial and error of problem solved. We'll put the big X on this one. <laughs> I wanted to come to a home appliance store to check out the different types of microwaves available on the market right now. The microwave I currently have is like super space age, like with a touch screen and everything. I wanted to see if they had anything really cool. All these are pretty standard. What's this? This one apparently has some smart diagnosis feature. I also like this style. It's such a big microwave. What would you do in there? It's a double decker. So you could like get some down here, get some stuff across the top. Do you have herbs that you just let die and go to waste? This is the easiest way to dry and make those herbs last. Let's start by stripping our herbs. You wanna just get all those flavorful herbs off the stem. Do this before those herbs dry out and turn brown to get a second life out of them. If your tender herbs are a little wilty, this is the perfect process. Just go ahead and dry them out. It's okay to keep some of those smaller, more tender stems, but get those woody stems out of here. Dry your herbs individually different herbs are gonna take slightly different times. I'm gonna lay these out on a clean kitchen towel, but you can also use paper towels. Sandwich it, and we're ready for the microwave. Keep your power level on high, and we're gonna do 
30 second burst. I'm gonna toss them around so that they start drying evenly. Let's try another 30 seconds. Starting to feel more brittle. Now we're gonna reduce those increments to 15 to 20 seconds. You know those herbs are ready when they're super brittle and snap apart. Surprisingly, the microwave's gonna do a great job at preserving color and flavor. This is hands down the simplest method for DIY dried herbs. Still beautifully bright green. Do you have one of these at home? Bonus points if you do. I have a spice jar, but any small airtight container will do. Just gonna break these up with my fingers. And they're good to go. Extra bonus points if you have a funnel at home. Your dried herbs will last you several months when kept cool, dry, and out of sunlight. Problem solved.